Materials used in this presentation are period in nature and used for educational and entertainment purposes. Furthermore, videos have been used in conjunction with the photographs to produce continuity, in some instances are composites, and fall within the purview of the fair use doctrine of U.S. copyright laws. Attributions are given when required. Welcome to A Moment in Crime a feature vignette presented by the True Crime Man's Dark Imagination YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this presentation or any other presentation on this channel, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell in order to receive notifications on any further offerings on this channel. London. What has been described as a, quote, fiend, demon, and lunatic, unquote, murdered five prostitutes and is suspected in the murder of as many as eleven. Quote, Jack the Ripper, unquote, sealed his bloody legacy in history with a reign of terror that even today, historians and researchers still ponder the identity of this murderer. More books are written on the subject and have been written on the subject than any other unsolved case. But 22 years before, an even more horrific killer stalked the streets of another major European city. But unlike the Whitechapel murderer, this quote ripper unquote would be stalked by one dogged detective who made sure that the murdered people would not go down in history as Quote, a cold case, unquote. On the morning of January 9th, 1866, Paris is buzzing with the news of another murder. It seemed that over the last four years, prostitutes in the City of Lights suffered a most horrific fate at the hands of an unknown butcher. On the night of January 8th, a 73-year-old man, Marcel Malwazo returned to his home. Malwazo stopped at the second floor apartment of Marie Baudou, a sex worker in Paris who occupied a small apartment just a few floors above a Paris police station. Malwazo befriended the young woman and checked on her periodically, especially with a mad killer on the loose. When Malwazo approached Baudou's door, he noticed it ajar. When Malwazo opened the door, and peered in, he noticed, by a flickering candlelight, a man, quote, standing before the mirror, adjusting his tie, unquote. Not much of an unusual sight within the apartment of a known prostitute. Malwazo, seeing that perhaps the transaction had not been completed between the prostitute and her client, stepped back into the hallway to await the man's departure. As Malwazo waited in the hallway, he noticed that the man may be taking longer than usual to leave Baudu's apartment. After all, the elderly man noticed the gentleman fixing his tie. It should not have taken as long for him to leave the apartment. Just when Malwazo opened the apartment door again, the man he saw fixing his tie just a few minutes before rushed past Malwazo and hastily bid the old man, quote, bonjour, unquote. Malwazo walked past the man into Baudu's apartment. He found the prostitute on the floor, dead. Her throat had been deeply cut, her body laying in a pool of blood. Her throat was cut so deeply that she was almost decapitated. When Malwazo alerted the police, the man had already escaped. Over the previous five years, Paris police felt as though this killer would never see the inside of the Cour d'Aziz. Eight women, mostly prostitutes, and two children had been murdered over that period of time, and even though they possessed a physical description of the assailant, which they received 18 months before by a young woman named Fouché, they still held no idea as to the identity of the alleged perpetrator. The killer left Baudu as he left the victims before, strangled 
then their throats cut from ear to ear, almost to the point of decapitation. The killer then washed himself, trying to destroy any of the gore that obviously saturated his clothing and person, then began tearing through the dead woman's belongings to find anything of value. One thing was for sure, in addition to possessing a description of the murderer, police knew the man had a tattoo that stated, quote, born under an unlucky star, unquote, with the star beneath the writing. Three days subsequent to the attack and murder of Marie Baudou, an artist living within the prostitution district of Paris, Madame Midi, heard a strange knock at her door. When she opened the door, she allegedly recognized the man. His name was Louis-Joseph Philippe, who worked as a handyman around Madame Midi's apartment. Philippe informed the artist that he may have left some tools at her residence the last time he did work there. Madame Meaty immediately stated to Philippe that she had not left the apartment in a few days, and if he had left any tools there, she would have found them. When the artist informed Philippe that she found no tools, he drew a pillowcase from beneath his coat and asked her if the pillowcase belonged to her. Madame Meaty became agitated at Philippe's questions and turned her back on him. When she turned, Philippe took the pillowcase and violently put it over her head, forcing the slackened cloth over her face into her mouth. With the other hand, Philippe began to choke her. Madame Meaty struggled and screamed, breaking free of Philippe's grip. At the same time, a neighbor of Madame Meaty happened to be passing her door and heard the commotion. Philippe rushed from the apartment, past the neighbor, and stated that Madame Meaty had taken sick and he was off to retrieve a doctor. When Philippe reached the street, the alarm had been sounded and neighbors managed to subdue him in the street before the apartment building. After a brief search of his person, police found a long knife and a search of his apartment yielded, quote, several blood-stained items belonging to some of the victims, including Marie Baudou, unquote. After police realized that they possibly had their murderer, they investigated the background of the suspect. Louis-Joseph Philippe was born in 1831 in Villemanfroy, eastern France, near the Swiss border. Philippe served in the French army, but received some disciplinary action for being drunk and miscellaneous on military behavior. After being discharged from the army, Philippe found himself in Paris. Employers noted that Philippe was a hard worker, but often reported for work drunk. Philippe once said to a waitress in a wine bar, I am very fond of women, and I accommodate them in my own way. I first strangle them, and then cut their throats. Wait a bit, and you will hear me talked about. Authorities believed that Philippe first began killing in 1861 when he first arrived in Paris. When confronted by authorities regarding the previous 10 murders, Philippe denied any knowledge of the crimes. Criminologists at the time believed that Philippe's love of drink caused his violent and grotesque behavior. In fact, they surmised from the English newspaper The Daily Telegraph, quote, nothing but seeing women in the agonies of death would subdue him." Unquote. Philippe actually used the murders to make a living in between jobs by robbing the women he murdered to sustain his drinking habits. A Monsieur Claude, a top-notch detective, had been pursuing Philippe since he connected the first two murders to the series Philippe had started in 1861. Claude would not let this maniac slip through his clutches. All in all, French authorities suspected Philippe in 10 murders that occurred over the last six years. However, they only found evidence linking him to four murders. Julia Robert, a 26-year-old prostitute, Flora Maget, 32 years old, and her four-year-old son, and Marie Victorine Baudou. After standing trial, the court convicted Philippe in record time and sentenced him to death. On January 28, 1866, the court's sentence was carried out when Philippe died at the hand of the executioner by guillotine. The condemned man had no last words. Certainly, Philippe may have set the stage for, quote, Jack the Ripper, unquote, some 22 years later, but unlike the Whitechapel murderer, Philippe displayed disorganization, 
and lacked any thought usually associated with a modern serial killer. In any case, positively, four people died at his hand, and history has attributed another six to his bloody legacy. This has been A Moment in Crime. If you've enjoyed this presentation or any other presentation on this channel, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell in order to receive notifications on any further offerings on this channel.